Hello everyone. Today, in this video, I want to talk about the Modbus protocol and how it relates to Modbus map section inside the Modbus monitor XPF application. The Modbus monitor application is available risk-free as a trial version. Be sure to check out the other video on how to download and install the application so you can follow along. All right, let's get started. Before we get into a Modbus monitor points, let's take a quick look at Modbus protocol and a typical Modbus frame. Modbus is an industrial communication protocol invented in 1979 by Modicon so that programmable logic controller devices can communicate to the other devices. It has become popular due to its simplicity, low cost, and lower implementation footprint. The Modbus master as defined initially in the Modicon Modbus Protocol Reference Guide uses the traditional master-slave or client-server technique. In other words, the client initiates the transactions or queries and the slave or server responds by supplying the requested data to the client or sending back and act messages on write commands. These transactions are byte stream with formatting in the Modbus protocol. For example, the two most common applications of the Modbus protocol are Modbus RTU and Modbus TCP. The Modbus RTU frame has a PDU and ADU. The Modbus TCP frame extends the ADU by adding several parameters to track multitasking and multi-protocols. The Modbus RTU was designed for serial communication, while Modbus TCP is aimed at modern TCP-based networks, including internet. Notice the address field. We'll get deeper into this field later in the video. Let's go deeper and take a look at real-world data flow of a simple Modbus RTU frame over RS-232 serial line at 9600 baud. Let's say the Modbus client, a SCADA or HMI, wants some information like a temperature value from a Modbus server such as solar panel inverter. The information such as temperature is stored inside the server as 64-bit float value. They are both set up to communicate over the serial line at 9600 baud. As mentioned earlier, the client prepares a query in a byte stream format for Modbus protocol. The client builds a Modbus RTU frame and stuffs slave ID, a function code, start address 0, and 4 as a length of a registers. This example asks for four holding registers starting at Modbus address 0. Then it initiates a query by sending the byte frame over a serial line at 9600 baud. It takes about 8 milliseconds plus 3.5 characters wait time for the server to get the entire frame over a serial line at 9600 baud. The server qualifies the query by checking the CRC, the address, and other parameters. If it all looks good, the server responds with the data frame or acknowledgement back to client. The server stuffs its slave ID, function code, length, and eight bytes or four register for the data. The client gets all bytes in about 13 milliseconds plus three and a half characters wait time at each end of the frame. For this request, entire message takes about 20 to 35 milliseconds to be fully received by the client. Next, the value is processed by the client and shown to the user. Now, let's discuss how to set Modbus monitoring point inside Modbus monitor XPF program so you can obtain similar information from the remote server and without worrying about the specifics of Modbus protocol or timing. More information than a temperature can be fetched from a remote server by setting up a Modbus monitor point inside Modbus monitor XPF application. Be sure to check out my other videos on how to navigate the application and how to use the various options. Modbus map is shown under this area. Be sure the log option is off if you don't see this map. The Modbus map list can have hundreds or thousands of monitoring points listed in this section. The Modbus monitor points, also known as tags in the PLC world. Each monitor point or a tag in this list is used in both client and a server mode of the program. 
So no need to set up a different list or load another program like some other applications in the market. Each monitor point or a tag makes one row in the Modbus map list. Each monitoring point has eight columns. Address and a unit columns are related to Modbus communications. This value is directly sent to Modbus frame without any translation. The other columns help convert the Modbus data and display it in a proper format. Let's dive deeper into this column to understand what they mean. Name is a human readable text that names each monitor point. This is not only used as a label, but also useful during searching and filtering the list out of thousands of points. It does serve one additional purpose besides labeling. The name can also contain number of registers when specifying a string as a data type. In other words, when data type is set a string, you can add a colon followed by a number to indicate how many registers to get from a server for a length of strings. For example, colon 128 means string of 256 characters. Each register contains two ASCII characters. You can adjust the swap type if your string is reversed. Be sure not to include a comma or a colon in a name to avoid any error during save or open. Comma is used as delimiter for CSV file format. The next column is a six digit Modbus address. This is a big topic and can get very confusing for beginners. I'll do my best to explain it here, but do refer to our official Modbus protocol document or a Wikipedia is another good source for in-depth understanding. At the Modbus monitor, we decided to use six-digit Modbus convention due to its simplicity and widespread use. Please note, this is not a Modbus address that goes on the wire or as defined in a Modbus protocol. It is generally accepted six-digit convention that is formed by a combination of function code as a prefix and an actual Modbus address as a suffix. The Modbus monitor application translates the first digit to an actual Modbus function code per this table. The next five digits are Modbus address in either one or zero base index. The zero base index matches the actual Modbus protocol and first coil or first register address starts with address zero. To make the matter more confusing, the Modbus frame on the wire or Modbus protocol only defines Modbus address as a zero base. The zero base addresses truthfully translates the value sent over the wire. For the one base addresses, the first coil or first register starts with the Modbus address one. So why use one base address? The short answer is to match the Modbus map for a legacy system, which used five digit one based address scheme. Original Modicom PLC started the values from 1 to 9999. Be sure to make the Modbus monitor application aware of your address choice. For example, to get the first holding register in a one based index, you would define 4 followed by 000. 000 Zero 01 and one base index must be set. To get the first holding register in a zero base address, you would define 4 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 and push the zero base index button. The actual frame on the wire in both cases contains function code 3 and address 0. Another example. The last address in a one base holding register is 465536 and 465535 in a zero base address. The table shows addresses for other Modbus data blocks. Unit ID is a Modbus slave ID, also known as a station ID. We'll adapt the unit ID since the industry is moving away from the old master slave words. The valid values for the unit ID range from 0 to 247. Unit ID of 1 or 2 is most common value. Unit ID 0 is defined as a broadcast address. Unit ID from 248 to 255 are reserved 
and should not be used. Gain and offset columns are decimal values that alter raw values fetched from the remote server. The linear equation formula is used by the application to alter the raw value. For example, if your device sends a value of 0 degrees Celsius and you want to convert to Fahrenheit, you would enter 1.8 in the gain and 32 to the offset cell. What does data type column do? Two things. One is controls the number of registers to fetch from a remote server. Also formats the raw value for the display. Modbus protocol does not define the data type or transaction methods. The Modbus monitor works with many data types common in the market. This is also very confusing for beginners since every manufacturer uses their own standard. So it is one of those necessary things that must be configured. Modbus monitor XPF automatically stops the number of registers needed based on the selection in this column. Let's look at some examples to understand how this is done by the application in the background. The Modbus protocol defines one register as 16 bits or one call as a binary bit. So the application requires one register for 16-bit data type. This includes integer 16 and unsigned integer 16 data type. Any 32-bit data type selection requests two registers as indicated by int32, unsigned32, or float32. Any 64-bit data type requests four Modbus registers as indicated by integer 64 and unsigned integer 64 and double. Hex format always requests one register. The data type also impacts the data range and it is very important to know these values. Let's look at how Modbus Monitor XPF shows actual values based on the data type selection. Let's start with just one register. The remote server sends one register with ABCD as 16-bit value as hex or 43,981 as unsigned 16-bit integer. When bit data type is selected, the Modbus monitor converts the raw value 16-bit register to the bits. For example, ABCD in hex as shown as zeros and one. Integer 16 data type is converted to signed integer in the range from negative 32,767 to 32,768 range. The raw register value containing ABCD hex will show negative 21,555 to users when int 16 is selected. Uint 16 selection converts the value to unsigned integer format in the range shown. Double 64 format asks for four registers and converts the value into IEEE 754 double precision format. You can also check the value outside of this program if you copy and paste into the value converter. String requests one or many registers as mentioned earlier in the video. Adding a colon followed by a number controls the string length. The string register has two bytes storing two ASCII characters. Add the length of a register in a name to get the longer string. Next, let's take a look at how we can further refine the data displayed by using the swap type. Modbus monitor starts with the ABCD BE as a big endian format that matches the Modbus protocol. The application shows two formats in one description. The easy to understand ABCD a logical order, or in a microprocessor terminology such as Big Endian or Little Endian. As an example, let's take a look at how double value is sent differently on the wire based on the swap type settings. The value negative 123456789.0123456789 is translated to a hex value of C196F34540C8458. How do I know this? I use IEEE 754 converter. Here are more examples of byte order depending on the swap type selection. Be sure to check out Wikipedia or other references for explanations. In closing, here are some helpful notes. 
this column plays a larger role in 32 and 64-bit values and during string data type or swap bytes. This column must have the same byte order as your remote device for our values to show correctly. The Modbus map of your remote device usually documents the byte order. If you don't have the document, you can try all four combinations until the displayed value looks good. Value column can be used to show the value from a remote client or save value into the process image of the server. In the client mode, the value is updated after the response is processed from the remote server. In a client mode, it also used to write value to the remote server. The application takes care of all conversions. The write mode is disabled by default for safety. It must be enabled here and pick either manual or auto. All right, we have reached the end of the video. Sorry for the long video, but hope you all found it helpful. We covered how to set a Modbus monitor point or a tag, how the Modbus RTU frame travels over the wire and a different display format. Give Modbus monitor XPF application a try if you don't have it already. It is available in Windows Store and check my other videos on how to get one installed. Let me know down in the comment which videos will be helpful to make next. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Alright, this is all I have you for today. I hope you enjoy. See you next time. Bye.